Honorable viewers, I welcome all of you to my YouTube channel, Department of English. Today's topic is Summary, the love song of J. Alfred Purfo. So let's get started. This poem, the earliest of Elliot's major works, was completed in 1910 or 1911 but not published until 1915. It is an examination of the tortured psycho of the prototypical modern man. Overducted, eloquent, neurotic, and emotionally stilted. Provoke, the poem's speaker, seems to be addressing a potential lover with whom he would like to force the moment to its crisis by somehow consummating the relationship. But Perfuk knows too much of life to dear and approach to the women. In his mind, the hears the comments others make about his indecuses, and he sides, he sides himself for presuming emotional interaction could be possible at all. The poem moves from a series of fairly concrete physical settings. A cityscape, the famous patient etherjet upon a table, and several interiors, women's arms in the lamplight, coffee spoons, fireplaces. To a series of vague ocean images conveying Perfok's emotional distance from the world as he comes to recognize his second right status. I am not Prince Hamlet. Perfuk is powerful for its range of intellectual reference and also for the vividness of character as it form. Perfuk is a variation on the dramatic monologue, a type of poem popular with Eliot's predecessors. predecessors. Dramatic monologues are similar to soliloquies in plays. Three things characterizes the dramatic monologue, according to M. S. Abrams. First, they are the utterances of a specific individual, not to the poet, at a specific moment in time. Secondly, the monologue is especially directed at our listener or listeners whose presence is not directly referenced but is merely suggested in the speaker's odds. Third, the primary focus is the development and re revelation of the speaker's character. Elite modernizes the form by removing the implete listeners and focusing on provokes interiority and isolation. The epigraph to this poem from Dante's Inferno describes Profuk's idol listener, one who is as lost as the speaker and will never try to the world and the content of Profuk's present con confusions. In the world, Profuk describes, though no such sympathetic figure exists and he must, therefore, be contained with silent reflection. In its focus on character and its dramatic sensibility, Profuk anticipates Eliot's later dramatic arcs. The rhyme scheme of this poem is irregular but not random. While sections of the poem mainly resemble free verse in reality, Profuk is a carefully structured amalgamation of poetic forms. The beats and pieces of rhyme become much more apparent when the poem is read aloud. One of the most prominent formal characteristics of this work is the use of reference. Profuk's continual return to the women who come and go talking of Michelangelo and his recurrent questioning, how should I presume, and pessimistic appraisals, that is not it at all. Both reference and earlier 
poetic tradition and help Eliot describe the consciousness of a modern neur neurotic individual. Provokes of obsessiveness is an aesthetic, but it is also a sign of compulsiveness and isolation. Another important formal feature is the use of fragments of sonnet form, particularly at the poem's conclusion. The three line stanzas are aimed as the conclusion of a patrician sonnet would be, but their pessimistic and romantic content coupled with the despairing interjection. I do not think they, the, the mermaids, would sa, sa, sing to me, creates a contrast that comments bitterly on the blackness of modernity. Commentary Provoke displays the two most important characteristics of Eliot's early poetry. First, it is strongly influenced by the French symbolists like Malarmes, Rimbound and Baudelaire, whom Eliot had been reading almost constantly while writing the poem. From the symbolist, Eliot takes his sensuous language and eye from an unerring or anti aesthetic detail that nevertheless contributes to the overall beauty of the poem. The yellow smoke and the yard above covered arms of the women are two good examples of this. The symbolists, too, privilege the same kind of individual Eliot creates with Provoke, the modi, urban, isolated yet sensitive thinker. However, whereas the symbolists would have been more likely to make their speaker himself a poet or artist, Eliot chooses to make provoke an unknowledged poet, a short of artist for the common man. The second defining characteristic of this poem is its use of fragmentation and juxtaposition. Eliot sustained his interest in fragmentation and its applications throughout his career and his use of the technique changes in important ways across his body of work. Here, the subjects undergoing fragmentation and resembling are mental focus and certain sets of imagery. In the West land, it is modern culture that splendors. In the four quarters, we find the fragments of attempted philosophical systems. Eliot's use of beads and pieces of formal structure suggests that fragmentation, although anxiety provoking, is nevertheless productive. Had he chosen to write in free verse, the poem would have seemed much more nihilistic. The kinds of imagery Eliot uses also suggest that something new can be made from the ruins. The series of hypothetical encounters at the poem's center are iterated and discontinuous but nevertheless lead to a shot of epiphany. Rather than just leading now, ever, now here, Eliot also introduces in an image that will record in his later poetry that of the scavenger. Profuk thinks that he should have been a pair of raised clouds or scuttling across the floors of silent seas. Crabs are scavengers, garbage eaters who live off refuge that makes its way to the seafloor. Eliot's discussions of his own poetic technique, see especially his, his tradition and that individual talent, suggest that making something beautiful out of the repose of modern life as a crab 
sustains and to nourishes itself and grubbes may in fact be the highest form of art at the very least this notion subverts romantic ideals about art at best it suggests that fragments may become rain targeted that art may in some way therapeutic for a broken modern world in the worst land curves become rares and the optimism disappears but here eliot seems to assert only the limitless potential of scavenging profuk ends with the here assigning himself a role on of shakespeare's plays while he is no hamlet he may yet be useful and important as an attendant lord one that will do to soil a progress start a skin or two this implies that there is a there is still a continuity between shakespeare's old and ours that hamlet is still relevant to us and that we are still part of a world that could produce something like shakespeare's plays implicit in this of course is a suggestion that eliot who has created an attendant lord may now go on to create another hamlet while profuk ends with a devolution of its hero it exalts its creation or does it the last line of the poem suggests otherwise that when the world introduces intrudes when human voices walk us the dream is shattered we drown with this single line eliot dismantles the romantic notion that poem genius is all that is needed to dream over the destructive impersonal forces of the modern world in reality eliot the poet is little better than his creation he differs from profuk only by retaining a bit of habris which shows through from time to time eliot's poetic creation thus mirrors profuk's soliloquy both are an expression of aesthetic ability and sensitive that seems to have no place in the modern world this realistic and romantic outlook leads the stays for eliot's later works including the wasteland so there's all about the love song of zelfred propuk for the timing thanks for patience hearing